In this video, we're going to continue looking at how we evaluate the spread of data, but this time we're going to relate it to continuous grouped data. So once again, we're sticking with the same theme. We have 820 ohm resistors, and what we're doing is we're measuring the nominal value of those resistors. Except this time, we have a much broader range of resistances, ranging from 750 ohms to 900 ohms, and we've tested a much greater number of resistors. So basically, as we've tested each of these resistances, we've made a note as to which of these bands they fit into, and then we've tabulated that information. So the first thing that we need to calculate is our mean. So if we refer to our formula in the top right hand side, the mean of group data is the sum of all the fx values divided by the sum of the f values, where f is the frequency, or the number of times a resistor is fitted into each of these bands, and fx is the frequency times the midpoint of the group. So here we have a group that ranges from 750 to 765. Before we can make a realistic determination of the mean, we have to approximate what resistance each of these resistors would have had. So for example, we have one resistor in the 750 to 765 ohm band, and the sensible assumption to make is that the resistance of that resistor is the midpoint of that group. Well, the midpoint of 750 and 765 equals 750 plus 765 all divided by 2. So remember to find the midpoint, we add the upper and lower limits and then we divide by 2 as we've done in a previous tutorial. So the midpoint of that group is 757.5. We can do the same for each of these groups. So the midpoint of this group is 765 plus our 780, all divided by 2 once again. And hopefully you can see the trend. Basically, we're adding 7.5 to our lower band each time. It is important to note at this stage that all of these groups are exactly 15 wide. And also, if we refer to our formulas, our variance and standard deviation formulas here only apply to equal intervals. But what we have then is we have 787.5 as our midpoint of the next group. We have 802.5 for the next group. Then we have 817.5. 832.5 and finally 892.5 so we have our midpoints for all of those groups. Next, to work out our mean, we need to multiply all of our frequencies by our midpoints. I'm just going to add an extra column in for this. So we need to multiply all of our frequencies by our midpoints, and we're going to do that in the next column. So fx. Well, all we need to do using our formulas in Excel is we need to set up a formula that multiplies on the first line, B3 by C3, on the next line, B4 by C4, and so on. So I'm going to do equals. I'm going to click on the B3 cell. I'm going to use Shift A or the star for our multiply, and I'm going to click on the C3 cell. Now, providing I don't absolute reference those cells, when I paste that to the next line, it will become B4 and C4 on the line after B5 and C5, and so on. So I can multiply down those groups to get my FX values. Okay, so we have our fx values. We need the sum of those fx values divided by the sum of the frequencies. So I'm going to sum all of those fx values and place it at the bottom of the fx column. So I'm going to click on the cell at the bottom of the fx column. I'm going to click on the formulas tab at the top. I'm going to click on the auto sum tab. And we can see that it's highlighted all the cells that it's going to add together, which are the cells that we want to add, all of the fx values. I'm going to hit equals. Set that a little bit larger so we can see that. 
And next, I need the sum of the frequencies because I'm gonna divide the sum of the FX values by the sum of the frequencies. So if I click on the cell at the bottom of the frequencies column, and once again, I want to auto sum my frequencies. So I'm gonna click on formulas. I'm gonna click on auto sum, and it's highlighting all of the frequencies that I'm gonna to add together. I hit equals, and I can see here that in my study, I've measured the resistance of 100 resistors. Now in the yellow table in the bottom left, I've set up some cells for calculating my mean average, my variance and my standard deviation. So my mean average is the sum of all of the FX values, which is the 82515 at the bottom of that column, divided by the sum of the frequencies, which is the 100 at the bottom of the sum of the frequencies column. So using a formula, I'm going to do equals the 82515 cell divided by the 100 cell I'm going to hit equals and my average resistance is 825.2 to one decimal place. Next we're going to move on to our variance formula. I'll just make this a little bit larger so you can see this while we discuss the formula. And what we see is that the variance this time is the same as previously. It's the x values, which is our midpoint values, minus the x bar values, which is the average value of the resistor. All of that squared times the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies. We'll break this down in stages. So first of all, we'll resolve the bracket, which is x, the midpoint value of the group of resistors, minus x bar, or we've used xm, which is the mean. And I've set up a column for that, x minus x subscript m. So I'm gonna do equals. I'm gonna click on the x value, which is the midpoint of each of these groups. And I'm gonna subtract from that the mean value of 825.2, which sits in our cell B14. Now, if you recall from the previous video, when I paste this formula down, I want C3 to become C4, but I don't want B14 to become B15. So I have to use absolute cell reference by putting a dollar sign before the B and a dollar sign before the 14. Then when I paste that formula down, C3 will change to C4, which will be the next midpoint, the 772.5, but B14 will remain as B14, or the mean average of 825.2. So let's hit equals, and we can see that that first group of resistors, the resistance of those deviates from the mean by minus 67.7 ohms. Paste them down. Okay, next we're going to square all of those values. And the main reason for squaring them is to remove any negative numbers. But we're gonna square each of those x minus x subscript m values, or in our formulas, we're gonna square all of our x minus x bar values. We're just using x subscript m for the mean instead of x bar. So squaring those values, I'm gonna do equals. I'm gonna click on the cell that I want to square. I'm gonna use shift six, which means to the power of, and then I'm gonna hit two because the power of two is the same as squaring. And that's gonna square E3 or the minus 67.7. When I paste that formula down, E3 will become E4. So it'll be squaring the minus 52.7 and so on down the group. So let's hit enter. Just change the number of decimals on there. We'll stick with one and I'm going to paste that formula down the group. Okay, so if we refer to the formula, we've now got x minus x bar all squared, but what we'll notice is that we need to times all of those values by the corresponding frequencies, and then we need to sum them. The sigma at the front there means to sum them. So we need to times all of those values, the x minus the average all squared values, and multiply them by the frequencies for the group, we then need to add them all up. And once we've added them all up, we need to divide that answer by the total number of resistors or the sum of all of those frequencies. So let's do that now. Our next column. I've added the heading frequency times open brackets x minus x subscript n close brackets squared to represent that section of the formula. And all I'm doing is I'm multiplying the x minus x x subscript m squared in the column to the left and I'm multiplying that so shift 8 by the frequency for that group 
and we've got a frequency column over here and I'm just going to click on the cell with the frequency in. So what that formula is doing is it's multiplying the 4576.5 by the frequency of 1 for that group, the 750 to 765 ohm resistors. When I paste that formula down, it will replace F3 with F4, it will replace B3 with B4, so it's going to multiply the 2772 in F4 by the 6 over here in B4, or the frequency. So once again, we'll paste that formula down. Okay, next in our formula, we need to sum everything in that column, and then we need to divide it by the sum of all of our frequencies, which if we've already got the sum of our frequencies from when we calculated our mean, it's this value of 100 down here in the table. So let's sum those formulas, auto sum. It highlights the cells that it's going to add together. I hit enter and it adds all of those cells together to give us 81,673. So my variance then in the yellow box, my variance is the sum of all of the frequencies times the midpoints minus the mean resistance squared or this column here, the sum of this column the 8167 2.8 divided by the sum of the frequencies which is the 100. So that equals G13, this cell here, divided by the sum of our frequencies which is B13 or this cell here. When I hit enter that gives us our variance. All that's left for me to calculate is my standard deviation. Now the same as before, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So I'm going to do equals. The command is SQRT for square root. And then I'm just going to click on the cell containing my variance, the 816.7. I'm going to close brackets and I'm going to hit enter. And I have my standard deviation of 28.6 to one decimal place. Just in closing to this video, another huge advantage to carrying out this analysis in Excel is if I was to repeat the study and I was to receive a new batch of resistors and I was to measure those resistors and get a different range of frequencies here, when I inputted new frequencies, the formulas would still recalculate my mean average and my variance. So let's, for example, reduce all of the frequencies for the lower value resistors. Now we see here it's automatically calculating. The first thing we notice is that our mean is a lot higher because we've got more resistors at the higher end of the band. So we've ended up this time with a mean of 836.1. But what we also notice is that the table in the bottom left has recalculated our variance. Our variance is now 746.1 and it's also recalculated our standard deviation. All of those formulas are still working for us. So hopefully that highlights the benefits of trying to get to grips with the functions in Excel. Thank you.